Now, so the reason I did ask you on, Pauline, Labor's plan for the voice. It's kind of an Aboriginal-only parliament in our constitution, we'll have a vote on it later this year, to supposedly consult Aborigines about government decisions as if it's never been done before. In fact, as I pointed out on this show, we already have a massive bureaucracy that does exactly that job. 1,300 people, no fewer, paid for by the Albanese government in what's called the National Indigenous Australians Agency. Now, today, in the Senate, you asked the government how much this NIAA was getting. I couldn't believe this answer. The NIAA priorities this year include closing the gaps, implementing the Uluru Statement, developing a new jobs program, delivering First Nations justice, whatever that means, and more. It has also budgeted $31 million to deliver local and regional voice implementation despite the Prime Minister saying he would not fund the yes or no cases in the coming referendum. Will the Minister please inform the Senate about the NIAA's total budget for 22 23 that information that uh, you are um, requesting uh, will, of course, be published in, uh, in due course. It's like, Don Farrell's a nice guy, but don't get me wrong, Paul. It's like you say, NIAA, what is that exactly? Now, you've, that figure has actually been published. You found it out, and it is twice as much as I thought because I relied on the annual report last year. Tell us the real figure, what this government gives to an agency that Don Farrell there couldn't even, you know, had, couldn't even think about what it was doing and why. Just shy of four and a half billion dollars a year. And that's under Prime Minister and Cabinet. <laughs> so anyway, this, this is what they get, Andrew. It's just absolutely bloody ridiculous. And they advise, um, it's... You know, this is what I've tried to put it out, and it's in the 22-23 budget. We're coming into the 23-24 budget, and he said, oh, it's going to be in the budget papers. He doesn't have a clue. He didn't know what he was talking about. And this is what I find a lot of the time. They don't know what they're talking about. And, uh, you know, couldn't answer the question. He was hopeless. It's Look, I, I watched that whole exchange. You asked him three questions, and he gave you an answer to none of them, like he didn't know and didn't care. I mean, this agency is doing exactly the consultative work and advisory work and lobbying ministers and presenting evidence to Senate committees and what have you that we're told The Voice should be doing and we're giving it $4.5 billion a year and he seemed barely to know it existed. Now, you asked another question about this voice I also want to show. Now, the person people watching can hear screaming, yes, right next to you is Senator Lydia Thorpe. She's the race-baiting senator who wants a sovereign Aboriginal nation. Here we go. And you don't even know. The budget papers are already out. Actually, the NIAA is almost $4.5 billion. It employs more than 1,300 people, and its remit appears to be largely the same as the government's somewhat vague intentions for the voice. That's truth-telling for you. Will the minister please explain why Australians should not believe the government's ulterior motive in implementing the Uluru Statement is to establish an independent, sovereign black nation in Australia? Yeah! Uh, order, Senator Thorpe. I completely reject your proposition. You've got another non-answer, really, apart from, oh, no, I don't agree with you. Pauline, we are going towards apartheid with this, aren't we? Oh, definitely, Andrew. Um, there's no other reason for it. As Senator Polly said on the floor of Parliament, we need to put this into the into the Constitution so it cannot be taken out. It's like everything we have in the Constitution, Section 51, states everything that the government should be dealing with, and it's one word. They said, Linda Burney last week, and having a, a hookup, telephone hookup with them, said it's going to be four lines. What you're doing is putting this into the Constitution, then the government can use part of it to do whatever they want to to implement any part they want into legislation so it's just you know tick this box give us a yes and we will just go and do whatever we want to do and andrew i've known about this they've wanted self-determination um, they've been wanting their own state within this country and it will be a black sovereign state the same as what they've done with the Inuit people in uh, none of us in canada 
and I tell you what, it will divide this country. Surely can't we see what's happened in, in Africa with a lot of the nations there, the division that's happened, and this is why I will continue to fight against this and I want people to really think seriously what they're going to hand over if they give this a, the tick of approval, the yes vote. Well, look... Pauline, we don't need to take your word for what the ambition of at least some activists, I'm not saying all Labor, but some activists is, because you heard Lydia Thorpe saying, yes, 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 right next to you. She couldn't, she was so excited she couldn't hide it. Pauline Hanson, thank you very much for your time.